thank you again. Um, again, um, I'm going to be talking on adjacent segment disease, and lots have been said since morning, so a lot of it will be revision. Um, obviously, when we talk about adjacent segment disease, uh, we talk about the, the what's the cause. So delayed union, non-union, hardware uh, factor, implantation mar implants migrating, pseudo-osmosis, and all that could lead to adjacent segment disease, and it may be interchangeable. So the main question is, is adjacent segment disease a normal aging process or progressive nature of primary disease itself? Does it really exist? And that's the question. Um, so adjacent segment disease as described by Hillebrand was it is a clinical phenomenon that has been defined as presentation of new symptoms refer referable to an adjacent level after patients have undergone successful surgical treatment of a spinal problem at an index level. Uh, and it should be distinguished from adjacent segment degeneration. So disease and degeneration are two different things that we're talking about. The concept of disease is based on hypothesis that specific spine interventions increase the likelihood of uh, spinal degeneration relative, uh, which is completely different to the natural route. There is no universally accepted validated outcome instrument to diagnose or quantify ASD. Different criteria in different studies, and they have significantly different results. So uh, the longest follow-up studies, if you look at a prospective randomized study uh, published in 2009, was with 111 <coughs> patients with systemic spondylolisthesis, randomized to exercise or posterior lateral fusion, with um, 37 of these patients without surgical instrumentation. And minimum, minimum follow-up they had was 10 years. Uh, one digital measurement method showed a mean disc height reduction of 2% in the exercise group and by 15% in uh, PLF group. In patients with laminectomy, they found a significantly higher incidence of ASD compared to non laminectomized patients. So 22 versus 2 um, out of 16. The long term randomized control trial shows that fusion accelerates degenerative changes at adjacent level compared with natural history. But again, the numbers are too small to come up with a conclusion here. The clinical outcome was not statistically different in patients with or without ASD. Clinical importance of ASD seems limited, so patients who we saw radiological ASD may not have clinical ASD. And none of these patients that we had in that series had any repeat surgery. So this is very, very important for us to know. So if you look at a case series of 1,000 patients uh, undergoing CLIF who followed for two years, and the average follow-up was 8.3 years, um, ASD was defined as a repeat onset of symptoms requiring a second procedure. So this was something that you know, neurosurgeons think about. Uh, they, were, they observed this in 9% of their patients. The average period between the first and second surgery was about five years. The probability of undergoing revision surgery for ASD was 6.2% at post-operative five years and 9% at 10 years, about 10%. The annual incidence of ASD requiring surgery was relatively constant at 1% for 10 years after primary surgery. So this is what they came up with with their 111 patients. So ASD is not just fusion related. Although ASD has been tradi traditionally attributed to fusion, any intervention, laminectomy, could result in ASD. The largest study in the literature reports a rate of 8% at five years after laminectomy in a series of 9,600 homogeneous spinal stenosis patients. So we know from this that obviously it's not fusion. There is something else as, as well that's going on. So prospective randomized multi-center FDA investigation uh, study with Charité artificial disc versus lumbar fusion, five-year follow-up, uh, published in 2009. And what they showed was that um, uh, radiographic analysis as index and adjacent level range of motion, segmental translation, disc height, and longitudinal ossification, they all looked at all these things. They found no statistical difference between the clinical outcome between the two groups. So, Clinically, um, th there was no statistical uh, evidence there. So uh, motion-preserving surgery can prevent early breakdown of adjacent segment disease. So if we see um, comparing motion preservation with fusion, 218 consecutive patients who underwent single level posterior L4-5 pedicle screw fusion or lig ligamentoplasty. And they followed them up for two years. And they uh, looked at adjacent segment morbidity and uh, if 
the adjacent uh, uh, surgery was required. And if you see here, if you had additional surgery and if you didn't have additional uh, adjacent segment disease, so we look at prevalence of adjacent segment disease and reoperation rate were lower in ligamentoplasty than fusion surgeries. But again, numbers are so small that the, it was not statistically significant. What about dynamic stabilization? We've been talking about it. Um, it was effective because radiographic or symptomatic ASP, so adjacent segment pathology and reoperation rates were significantly lower in dynamic posterior instrumentation group compared to fusion. Whereas another study coming out in 2009, this is 2014, no difference in adjacent um, level range of motion and adjacent um, disc degeneration when comparing dynamic versus fusion. So you've got one study, similar number of cases saying yes, the other study saying no. So type of fusion effects ASD. So method of fusion, circumferential, interbody, posterior lateral has not sho been shown to be associated with increased rate of ASD. Some studies have reported a lower incidence of degeneration with ALF alone. And this may be because of certain factors. So adjacent segment disease, two level axial lumbar interbody fusion, and they had um, 149 cases. And what they showed was rate of symptomatic adjacent segment disease uh, was up to 4.7% uh, at two years and 10% at um, uh, five years. So what are the risk factors that may be associated with? So it's, everything is not that simple that you do instrumentation, you do a laminectomy, everybody gets ASD. So there are pre-existing factors like age, um, already uh, some kind of disc degeneration present at the adjacent level and you just choose to do the level which is more uh, significant. Facet degeneration or tropism of adjacent segment. Again, um, with MRI, there have been uh, multiple studies uh, some saying that yes, it does make a difference. Some saying no, it doesn't make any difference. Gender, have we have talked about, obviously osteoporosis, smoking, physical activity, if completely inactive patient, obviously their degeneration is gonna be much faster in somebody who's active. And then surgery related, all this, some of this has been proven, number of fusion segments, yes, the more segments you fuse, the more chances they're gonna put pressure on the adjacent segment. If there is a damage during surgery, for example, you do too much of cauterization to adjacent segment. For example, you open up the uh, posterior muscles. Uh, for example, you're doing open surgery. Um, fusion methods that you're gonna use. And recently we have shown sagittal alignments and uh, floating fusion. So if you leave a floating fusion, there may be, there are some studies that have shown that you can have a higher incidence and some showing lower incidence. Again, age, no definite association has been shown, although it's been shown that you know, biomechanical changes induced by fusion could be related to age-related phenomenon than anything else. Uh, is there already a adjacent segment degeneration, adjacent segment? So what happens there? So very small number of patients, they found that L5-S1 degeneration occurred in 61% of these patients where the fusion was done from L5 to average of 5.6 years. And so th thoracolumbar fusion and they um, stopped at L5, and their uh, degeneration was 61% in these patients. Again, another study, um, same kind of numbers, and not showing that there is any statistically significant difference between the two. So fusion of three or more levels increased the risk of revision surgery by three times when compared to single level fusion. So looking at risk factors, and then facet degeneration tropism. So if you look at that, risk factors, adjacent segment disease. Uh, revision surgery for ASP was needed in 2% of 1,000 patients who underwent fusion. The pre-existing facet degeneration was the only significant factor that they found. Whereas other studies have shown that there was no uh, relationship to this. So fusion methods, overall most of the st studies report there are no significant difference in inci ASP incidence between fusion methods and no difference in clinical outcome and additional surgery rate between the three groups that they looked at specifically with cliff and with pedicle screws and 360 degree fusion. But uh, they did not include ALF in this study. Uh, several studies reported that patients treated with anterior interbody fusion have very low ASD. Again, those studies are not statistically significant. So for more than 20 years, why it all followed patients who had undergone anterior lumbar interbody fusion with MRI, and they showed that 6% of patients underwent surgery for ASD, 
and there was no difference in AZ incidence when they compared to other non-adjacent segments. So men, on the other hand, looked at the adjacent segment disease incidence in spondylolisthesis patients, and in their series, they found 44% of patients developed adjacent segment disease after ALS, and it was significantly lower of the 83% after posterior interbody fusion. So this is, uh, they're looking at degeneration and not itself um, uh, something that would require surgery. So again, all these papers have different criteria to uh, come up with what is the best way forward. So could a topping off te technique um, reduce adjacent segment disease? So uh, applicants, application of hybrid dynamic vertical screw construct or interspinous process device above the fuse, uh, fuse segment, can that reduce adjacent uh, segment disease? So theoretically it can. So, uh, but again, there is no um, statistically significant um, um, studies proving that. So what are the strategies? If you use minimal disk space distraction for cage place placement, so if you do too much of uh, disk distraction, you can cause problems. If you do too little, you can cause problems. Uh, you preserve the posterior elements, and you can do that if you're doing minimally invasive surgery. Uh, you can use motion preservation techniques, and you're diverging stress forces on the adjacent segments. So minimally invasive techniques, can they preserve, um, or do they have a role in preventing ASD? So there are some studies who have said that yes, it's possible, but again, this is um, a, a laboratory study that has shown it's possible. There are studies which have uh, said that it's possible, but again, the numbers are too small to come up with a statistically significant um, result. Sagittal alignments, on the other hand, multiple people, multiple groups have shown that there is significant um, uh, issues with surgical alignment. So if you've got surgical balance, is the most important uh, to be the development of a uh, whole physiological spine, which uh, maintains alignment with minimal energy expenditure. So uh, um, abnormal sagittal alignment after fusion is believed to be the uh, uh, main cause of biomechanical alteration and adjacent segment disease in multiple studies that have come out there. So pelvic tilt and thoracic kyphosis of pelvic tilt of 24%, um, whereas thoracic kyphosis of more than 23 could be regarded as predictors uh, for um, lumbar um, uh, T-lift. Balance, um, fusion segment lordotic angle. So if you look at a particular segment and look at their lordotic angle and patients followed up for more than five years after lumbar spinal fusion, the most important factor in prevention of ASD was the restoration of S FSLA for a level of more than 15 degrees. So that particular segment, uh, segment lordotic angle, uh, more than 15 degrees was a predictor. So relationship between sagittal balance and adjacent segment disease ALD is degenerative pathology develops in mobile segment above and below fused segments. The sagittal parameters PT, SS, PILL, and LL may predict development of ALD in patients post lumbar fusion for degeneration. Floating fusion, L4-5 fusion can cause ASD more frequently than L5-S1 or L4-5 fusion, and L4-5 fusion is a risk factor for, um, for ASD. On the other hand, they found uh, this group found no difference in clinical results between floating segment group and non-floating segment group. So I think all the, the literature is hodgepodge because the way we do our studies. So we do not think beforehand what has been done, how can we improve that? Osteoporosis, well, parathermone with the uh, lumbar spinal fusion surgery has shown to be a, a factor. It may prevent by preserving disc height, microvessel density, uh, relative area of vascular bu uh, buds um, end plate thickness and relative uh, area of end plate calcification. So many people now routinely use this um, in their osteoporotic patients before they go on to have surgery. So is there a radiological criteria that we can come up with? So these guys uh, came up with this criteria uh, to reduce ASD. Radiological ASD has to be defined and for that they said if a decrease of more than three millimeter in disc height, an intervertebral uh, angle at flexion less uh, than uh, five degrees, progression of slippage more than three millimeters compared with preoperative flexion and extension lateral radiographic views. And these are uh, some of uh, the papers have come up individually with each and every one of them, these guys that uh, combined them together. This may be uh, one of the ways to look at it radiologically. So does it really exist um, from the <laughs> literature data that we have, really it's not possible to say, but you know, natural history of spinal degeneration disease is present in most of these cases than anything else. 
Uh, clinical ASD is less common. Uh, this requirement of surgery is rare. Radiological ASD is common in lumbar spine surgery. Factors associated are, uh, could be um, laminectomy adjacent to fusion, surgical imbalance and non-preservation of posterior elements. New technologies, MIS, motion preservation, have not yet been proven to reduce the rate of ASD, and in some cases may even increase ASD, as reported by some of the um, people that we have shown there. ALF has been shown to lower ASD compared to fu uh, posterior fusion strategies, probably because of intact posterior tension bands, so that may be a reason. Floating segments are not proven to be associated with higher ASD, and still controversy exists. Again, we'd like to invite you, all of you, to World Spine 9 in Korea next year. Thank you.